Hey, 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 how y'all doing today? I am so excited to be with you guys. You know who I am. I am Belise Spivey. This year, I am the live, life, live, uh, beyond herpes queen, guys, but known as the ST Life Coach, the only one you're going to find in the world. So somebody try to be that, just know that's not them. They stole it, okay? But in the end of the day, guys, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, I thank you to be with me on this Tuesday. Every single Tuesday, we have an educational day. And I'm thinking about adding an additional educational day to give y'all two education days on top of all my view blogs on top of um, um, a live every week. I think I'm about to commit to another day. I haven't figured out what day that's going to be. But best believe, guys, I'm believing to commit another day. Bear with me right now as I try to get my dates and times, like get my timing better. You know, we used to get the um, educational at 8, but I'm doing a lot more than I was before. So everything been kind of later. Bear with me. I'm going to do better. or try to record everything better. Things like that. So y'all be patient with me as I get it together. But best believe it's going to get done. Okay. So with that being said, guys, today this topic is very heavy, but this topic is very um, required, especially in the time that we're in now. Okay. Um, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, this is perfect for you. If you're not a Christian, I still want you to listen because if you decide to want to be a Christian, you're going to be convicted or you're going to deal with some condemnation and you need to know why. Okay. Some words I'm going to use disclaimer. What I'm going to talk about if you're not a Christian um, or you've not been in church or anything like that, you're not going to understand all my terminology. So I will go back and forth trying to explain things just for the sake of understanding. If he, God says nothing else, get understanding, get wisdom, but get understanding. So today I want you to understand what I'm saying because at the end of the day, it's going to free so many people today. Okay, this is a this is surely a one I want you to to share with your friends who are Christians and who are living with herpes. Okay, who are Christians and living with herpes. I ain't talking about holding it down, just a Christian period and living with herpes because I'm telling you they are struggling in this area. And today God has sent me to free you. Okay, He has sent you uh, sent you to me to see why you are here. So if you see on the title today, you see uh, Christians figure out. Why you have herpes or find out why you have herpes. You're thinking, Belize, why would God give me herpes? Let me tell you. I, I, let me, I can tell you. I can tell you a couple of reasons why you are living with herpes right now. Number one, because you sinned. I love you dearly, but you know God don't play about having sex before marriage, okay? This is for my people who have sex before marriage, okay, too. This is not for my people who are married and molestation or anything like that. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to my people who decided to bust down, bust it out, do all that. You know, y'all been doing the busted challenge. Right? Y'all ain't going to catch this one. Okay? My husband can only see me drop it like it's hot. Okay? Nobody else can see that. You caught me in my bad days. You can't catch me in my good days. All right? But at the end of the day, guys... Um, these are people who made a choice. We all make choices. We got to be responsible. If you're here, you're going to be responsible today. I'm not playing with you with that thought. Well, um, uh, uh, lies. Okay. You wanted to have sex. So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to get in your butt today, get in your feelings, but just know I love you. It's coming from a loving place. I am not judging you. I am not making you feel bad. I am not going to tear you down. I am going to bring you up, but I'm about to be transparent with you, which is telling my story, but I'm also going to give it real with you to get you free. Okay? I got to get you out of this because a lot of you guys are stagnant in your walk with God because of herpes. Because you decided to sin and because you are living a consequence of your sin. If anybody know anything about sin, if you have read Romans, I'm going to quote scripture a little today. Kind of like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to talk about where it's at and I'm going to kind of like paraphrase it. Um, Do your own research. Don't ever take no thing that nobody say as bond. Look in the word for yourself, okay? So in the Romans, if you know anything about Romans, Romans is Paul talking about sin and what sin is about and why God don't like sin and why and what happens with us with sin and why God, G Jesus came and died on a cross for our sins. Please read Romans, guys. I'm in Romans. I am stuck at 7 and 5 and also I'm stuck because I ain't had, listen, I got to learn how to make more time and God is getting in my butt body, okay? But at the end of the day, guys, I'm stuck right there because at the end of the day, I 
had a better understanding of sin. I had a better understanding of why Jesus died on the cross for it. I had a better understanding of why our minds is saved now and not our bodies. Your body is not saved. Your mind is. You, you got saved here. When you got saved here, you make constantly, uh, constant decisions to live a righteous and holy life. You did not get righteous in your body. You didn't get righteous and you didn't get holy in your body. Your flesh ain't loyal. It has its desires. It's going to want what it wants. It's going to try to tell you what to do. But last time I checked, your brain tell you what, tell the body what to do, not the body tell the brain. The only thing the body do is signal when something is going on and allowing the brain to process the figure out of plan. Okay, y'all hear me? I'm going to preach today. Okay, I'm going to preach today. So I need y'all to hear me. Your body do not make decisions. Your mind do. So you made a decision to have sex with your boyfriend, fiance, whatever it is, homeboy, homegirl, girlfriend, cut friend, swinger partners, uh, polygamy, all of that. You made those decisions to be sexually active before marriage. Okay, but at least why we got to do that? Read the word and find out why he said it. Don't hold my word as bond. Listen to God. Okay, if God tell you to do something, you do it. Obedience, and this is what my best friend said. Obedience um, is, ob what, what did she say? Best friend. Best friend. My Kia. I got to find her. But <laughs> she's in the house. But literally she said obedience Oh, obedience don't need an explanation. Okay, that's it. Obedience don't need an explanation. When your mama used to tell you to do something, she didn't ask, you asked for why? She said, you better shut up and do what I told you to do. Obedience don't need an explanation. Most of us want to know, why I can't do this? And why? Because he said so. Same way your mama would smack you or give you punishment or you live out your consequences for your actions for what she told you not to do it's the same thing we got natural we have physical mothers nerfly earthly things and we have spiritual things the things that happen in heaven happen here on earth so at the end of the day god is our daddy and then we got our moms and dads here and then when they tell us stuff the same way you'll get checked here is the same way you're going to get checked with him. He's going to let you live out your console. He's going to give you over to what you say you want. Same way your mom said, oh, you want to go up in them streets and do what you want to do? Don't ask me for no freaking help because you, you want to do what you want to do. Okay? I'm a mama. I'm going to talk to y'all like a mama. I'm a mama of two boys. I got a 10-year-old and I got a 6-year-old. So I'm going to talk to y'all like a mama. Y'all can be old to me. But look, some of us need a mama talk. And I'm going to give y'all a mama talk today. Because we need to understand as Christians, as believers, as disciples, as children of God, as children, righteous, not righteousness of God, we need to understand that sex is dangerous outside of marriage. Okay? Now these things can happen in your marriage. Okay? I'm not neglecting that. I end up getting type 1 out of my marriage. So, okay, I have type 2, genital, before I got married, and I end up getting type 1 in my marriage, which I think I got genital in my marriage, okay, as well. So, you can have both types in one area, or you can have two separate areas, okay? Talked about that before, just tip it. So, with that being said, guys, I want you to understand more than anything is that God loves you. Jesus died on the cross for your sin and what you choose to do now you will have consequences for he's it's not gonna make you fall out with God it's not going to change that he's gonna protect you love you give you wealth all that everything's available to you but sin make you feel distant that's what it does and make you feel distant from the one who loves you. Same way if you did something wrong. Now you're scared to talk to your mama. Now you're scared to ask questions. You're scared because you know what you did was wrong. Same situation, guys. So I want you to understand what you're doing with having sex <laughs> is separating yourself from God. Or any other sin, you're separating yourself from God. You are separate. You. Because God said, nothing will separate me. But you making a decision to do something that make you feel separated when he still is near you the whole time. In you, next to you, around you, covering you, uh, touching you, all of that. He is all up through you, okay? All up through you. Y'all, I feel like this thing is touching my eyelash. But at the end of the day, he's all up through it. And that's the word, too. Get, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing, not even yourself, 
But we do it ourselves because at the end of the day, then we feel like I can't talk to him. I can't ask him for nothing. I can't ask for forgiveness. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's not the word of God. That's you. Because you chose to do something and you're not and you want to run, which happened with Adam and Eve. They did something they had no business doing. Now they want to hide. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Who told you it was okay to have sex? Who told you to do that? Who told you? Because I told you, you know what I told you. And you did the opposite. Now you got consequences for your action. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm quoting. I'm, I'm going to relate because I need y'all to see why you are here. I want you to see that this is nothing new. Nothing is new under the sun, guys. That's in the Bible too. Look it up. I want you guys, nothing is new under the sun. What you're experiencing is what Adam and Eve has experienced. They did some God told them not to touch the door and tree. And they touched the tree and he kicked them out. God told you not to have sex. Before marriage, you end up getting something. Not saying that you won't happen in your marriage, guys. I'm not talking to you, okay? I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to my people who have been molested or raped. I'm not talking to you. I'm people who talk to people who made choices, not people who made choices for you. I'm talking about you making choices, okay? It's about you being responsible. You need to sit down and ask yourself, why do I believe? That sex is more important than what my daddy said for my protection. Okay, for real. Like, I had to ask myself these hard things. You may not get no answer today. You may not get no answer this year fully. Because a lot of us don't really want to answer. We really don't want to get to the knit and grit. We really don't want to get to the root. And when you get to the root, you realize it's stuff that is trauma. It's things that you experience. It's things that people introduce to you. But you took it on as your own and you lived it out. Some of it is generational curses. Generational curse is something that happened in your bloodline that continue to be taught. Bloodline to bloodline. Okay? Taught. Listen. Taught. Bloodline to bloodline. For example, uh, yes ma'am, no ma'am. That was taught to us through slavery that we had to say yes now, no ma'am. And now we still teach our kids yes now, no ma'am. Despite that it's not a bad thing, but at the end of the day we was told to do that to respect Caucasians. And to put them at a certain uh, stolen ball. That's a generation. That's a generational thing. I'm not saying that's a curse, but I'm showing you how things can come down in your bloodline that happen. If your mama had a child before 18, and chances are you seen your grandma do it, it, it trickles down. Because at the end of the day, you see it, you think it's acceptable, and you keep doing it. So if you're around people or you think it's okay to have sex. Before marriage, or around people who think it's okay to have sex before marriage, you're going to keep doing it. Because it's being condoned. And now you're getting watered down to believe it's okay. But today, I'm telling you, it's not okay. Get mad. Get mad. Do what you want. Listen, I ain't got to answer to God for you. Listen, I have answered to him for me. And I got all the way checked. Is being celibate easy? No. Your flesh is not loyal. You got to learn boundaries. You got to go at home at night when you know he rub No rubbing on your booty if you know you it turn you on. No extra heavy kissing if it turns you on. I'm not telling you you can't uh, be intimate with your partner. And I ain't talking about no fondling. I ain't talking about none of that. I'm talking about intimate kissing, hugging, touching. And I mean physical touch. I ain't talking about touching your private parts. I ain't talking about that. But I'm talking about, like, if you want to rub your booty or touch your booty or you want to hug it. No, I'm not talking about any of that. Uh, I'm talking about that. But at the end of the day, I want you guys, you can do that. But you got to know when your body is about to take over. You got to know when you feel that little tingling between your legs. Y'all know. all folks. If you feel that tingle, uh-uh. You feel the tingling in your legs. I know me. I know how my vagina feels when she say, girl, come on. Come on. I'm feeling my blood is pumping. Dudes, your, your, your pee is starting to jump. I'm being honest. I'm being grown. We all are grown. If you're having sex, you're being grown. So we're going to have grown conversations, okay? But at the end of the day, you can feel it. You can feel your, like, sometimes my stomach started to get tight. Everything started to get, you started to sweat, you started to, I mean, your arms started to get sweaty. Everything, you can feel your body start to tingle, your brain start to imagine what it feel like. Y'all, I realize I still got my clips on my head. <laughs> Y'all bear with me, I took pictures with my clips in, guys. It was style today, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you gotta understand that you gotta know your body. 
And you got to know when to say no and to give yourself a way of escape. God gives a way of escape. If y'all just say, okay, we ain't going to do this and run, run. Let me give you an example. When I was in my last relationship, we agreed that we were celibate. We had been celibate both, you know, I had been celibate for a year, almost a year at the time. And he had um, started his celibacy a couple of months prior. Okay, so we talked about we ain't going to do this, we ain't going to do that. You know, what's okay, what's not okay. Now, we had a conversation. But what happened is he started spending the night with me more often. As he started spending the night, we started kissing more. We started touching more. We started condoning stuff more. And then we started having sex. We had sex. Oh, my God. I cried, y'all. I boo-hoo so bad. He felt bad. We literally ended up going to our passenger first lady right after that. Okay? Because we were like, what can we do? We don't know what to do. Things like that. We need to stop. They were like, boundaries. Y'all don't need to be spending the night with each other. Y'all don't need to do so. Now, okay, so we agreed upon that. Okay, no spending the night, no nothing, no this, no that. Okay, um, something happened. We decided to spend the night again. It happened again. What we didn't do, we did not listen to the leadership that we had, which told us no more spending a night. And at that, we kept doing the same things, expecting a new result. New result. He needs to go home every night. Because at the end of the day, we had already experienced each other. Now we're yarning each other. And we want each other. And it feels good. And it, it was great. Okay? Sex is a great thing. It feels amazing. Okay? That makes you want to do it. Your body says, ooh, feel good. When anything feels good to your body, it want to do it over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like it's, it's like sugar. You want more and more and more. That's, the, that's how the body works. It loves good things. And when it's bad, it wants to push it away. Okay? So, I want y'all to understand that. So, I just want y'all to, as I'm about to close this out, because I have really gotten to the point. I don't say what I need to say. You need to sit down and get to the root of why you have herpes. Number one is because you have sex. But you need to understand your doctrine behind having sex before marriage. Why you condone it. Why you think it's okay. And why you condone it around other, with people in your circle who are Christians as well. I got checked. I, I, I can be honest. I was checked by another herpes activist. Thank you, Kendra. Um, Kendra came to me twice, y'all. Twice and said, but least, you know, you, you, you need to, you don't condone it. We're believers. As believers, we don't condone things of that nature. And I was like, no, you know, Kendra, I talk to people at their level and da, 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 da. No, I was being disobedient because I was doing that of what I was condoning. When you're not condoning it, you're not going to push it. But when you condone, when you're, when you're condoning it, you're doing it. Oh, ooh, listen, you're doing it or you agree with it in some type of form. Okay. And then Kendra came to me again and said this to me. And I caught a whole attitude with Kendra, y'all. I already apologized to her. So, you, look, I don't need you to tell me what I need to do. I already did that. God convicted me and I apologized to me and had a heart to heart. I thank her for doing the hard thing of coming in and telling me, but at least you're wrong. That's not a God. That's not a God. So, I'm coming to you and telling you that's not a God. I'm not condoning you to have sex anymore. Y'all hear me? I'm not condoning y'all to have sex anymore. If you're not a believer, you're going to do what you want to do. But pertaining to my brothers and sisters in Christ, stop it. And I'm serious this time. Before, I agree with it, but I still was struggling with my own doctrine. I was struggling with my own flesh and letting my flesh control me. I'm out. This flesh ain't got no control. My mind got all control because God got my mind. I renew my mind with him. That's why he say renew your mind. Don't conform to this world. He tell us that. He said, you renew your mind because he has control of your mind. You, he said, y'all, I can think of so many scriptures in mind. But in, in it, mind, I would, I would challenge y'all, my believers, or you're not a believer and just want to have an understanding of the word or what I'm saying, then go and go to a Bible app and look up anything, like put in the word mind and find scriptures on the mind. And I'm telling you, you will understand why God say he cares about your mind. Why he tell you to renew your mind. Why he wants your mind. He don't. He can care less about that body. Jesus was your body. Because you could not take anything that he went through. Anything. We're dealing with his type of pain over the course of our whole life. What he experiences, we will never experience. In one day. Okay? So don't take what he did on the cross for granted. Don't take Holy Spirit for granted, which is the voice within you that you hear. Okay? That conviction that you feel of don't do that. You can know better. Or your friends telling you, girl, uh-uh. That's not you. What's wrong with you? That's conviction. Let me tell you the difference with condemnation. 
Oh, oh my God, God doesn't love me. Oh my God, I'm a horrible person. Oh my God, I'm disgusting. Oh my God, my life is over. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I can't go to him anymore. I can't ask for anything no more. My life is the end. I want to die. Uh, kill me now. I'm going to kill myself. That's conviction. And that's not a God. God is not going to, um, not conviction, it's condemnation. I counsel that. It's condemnation. Condemnation is to kill you. It's to make you feel like God doesn't want you anymore. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. Okay? God said nothing will separate me. That, that's why Jesus died on the cross. He's, he's the in-between. So we can go directly to God. Because he took care of the sin for us. So why we keep sinning when it was taken care of? It's because the flesh ain't loyal. But your mind have control. Control your body. Your body is a temple. It's not yours. It don't even belong to you. You're a vessel to do whatever God tells you to do. Wait is way worth it. I'm telling you, let me tell y'all one thing I learned about my celibacy, which I'm back on my celibacy journey, okay? One thing I learned about my celibacy journey is as you keep doing what God tells you to do, which is whatever dreams that he put in your heart, any visions, any businesses, any careers, any education, any servicing, anything he tells you to do, as long as you seeking first the kingdom of God, Number one, all things will be added to you. But on top of that, the urges won't be there. It can't, it don't have time. It don't have time because you're so focused. It don't have time. Like right now, I have urges, but I have those urges when I'm I'm, I'm worried. Or I'm like, oh, God, it's going to work out. Or, oh my God, I'm, I'm allowing a little anxiety. He said, cast all your cares on him. Cast your anxiety. Cast your worry on him. Because at the end of the day, he, he loves you. He, you can trust him. And he's going to take care of it. He said, I provide. Okay. I provide. And why do Okay, sorry, y'all. I'm about to listen to that song. Um, why do you worry about your life? Y'all, that song gonna make me cry. But at the end of the day, um, it's no need. It's no need to have that. But my urges come when I forget that he provided for me, that he has a way, that if I ask, I will receive. If I knock, he will open. I forget those things. And when I forget, which my mind, I allow my mind to forget that for a second. That's when my body says, hey, let me fix it. Hey, let me help you. Hey, let me make you feel good so you won't feel low. Okay? Your body always wants you to feel good. It doesn't matter if it's righteousness, holiness, or sin. Your body wants you to feel good. And if they know it's something, you, your body knows it's something you like, it wants to continue to do it. Okay? So I love you guys. I am done. I ain't got nothing else to say. I said what I need to say. Accept it. Accept it. And accept it. I don't want to hear. I don't want to accept it. God, convict them in the name of Jesus. God, get in their hearts, get in their minds, God. I thank you right now for this, for what you called me to do. I didn't need, I didn't know I wouldn't pray. But I thank you for it. I thank you for every person that's on here. I thank you for every person who's going to watch this, every person who's going to be shared to. I thank you, Lord God, that people are going to be free today from um, sexual immorality, that they're going to stop having sex before marriage, and they're going to get around people who support them, love them. They're going to let people go. They're not going to listen to conversations. They're not going to watch things. They're not going to be entertained by things. They're going to tell their body no. They're going to take the way of escape. In Jesus' name, amen. So I love you guys. I do want to tell you guys that we are having the over virtual overcoming gathering. Woo! So, guys, the tickets are already available. $25, guys. You do not want to miss it. You can get your ticket now on March 20th, 12 to 3. We are probably going to be on Zoom or something like that. I'm still going to consider the um, platform. But we're going to get together. We're going to get cute. We're going to be cute. We're going to get your clothes on. And we're going to get on this live. And you're going to meet people across the globe, guys. My whole goal for this virtual is for us to finally get to meet everybody. Y'all know for the last two years, I've been going to places. I've been to New York. I've been to Houston. I've been to uh, uh, South Carolina. Uh, I've been to Huntsville. Where else did I go? Uh, uh, I'm thinking, y'all. Where else did I go? Chicago. So I've been to those places. I supposed to went to California, but I did. All right, guys. I gotta have to replay that because I don't know where y'all missed it. Sorry for the uh, click out. My thing only hold for so long. So at the end of the day, guys, we all want to come together. I have been multiple places. This time, we all want to come together to one place. My goal is to have a hundred people on this live, on this, on this thing. A hundred people. Y'all gonna wonder how I can manage it? I can. I can manage it well. Guys, gonna help me on how moderators and everything else. But we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna be cute. We're gonna be able to ask questions. We're gonna have speakers, guys. I already got two people 
people that are the mother freaking bomb. I got another person that is on my heart to ask him as well to come on to speak. Y'all got anybody else you like, oh, I would love to hear this person. Guys, I ain't got no problem with asking somebody. God gave me favor and I know more people than you think. So with that being said, I got three people in my brain that I want to come on here to give you guys great information how to get through your mental health dealing with herpes, how to live on, and also to give you information about what's going on within the sexual health industry, um, information that we may want to know, and also give our feedback because this one person I want to bring on, she is the director of, um, of, uh, director of family health, whatever, here in Atlanta. Um, but at the end of the day, she is on the sexual health board. So now we got direct connect. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm doing. Direct connect to people who can change the game for us because she can have a hundred voices telling her what we need. Okay, she was known as the syphilis woman. Okay, so I'm so excited about her. I love her. She's my mentor. She's my sister. She's my auntie. She be getting my life. I just talked to her this week. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, you do not want to miss it. You will also get a swag bag where I will mail to you the week before. Um, it will be my book that is um, autographed. So you get my book, Overcoming What Can't Be Cured, in it. So you'll get the book. Um, you'll also get a discount code so you can get free shipping, okay? So I'll give you that on your next order. You will also receive, oh, what else I got? A personal note as well, and you will get a sample of my product, one of my products. Ah! So you're going to get really good stuff. You do not want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. The information below, get your ticket now. It's going to be gone, guys, because now UK can get in, Jamaica can get in, all can get in. People who've been wanting me to get to them and I couldn't get to them are now going to have the opportunity to get to me. If you want to be there, be there. I am going to do it again um, in October for the new school people who going to meet me, find me, whatever. Um, and I'm going to do it right before Herpes Awareness Day. So this is a great time. If you want to jump on this one, jump on this one. If you want to jump on the one at the end of the year, fine. Okay, fine, fine, fine. But March 20th is the date. Also want to let you guys know 40% off is still available to y'all to all my Outbreak products. Do not miss it. Use the products. They work. I love y'all. Y'all be using other people's products. Why? I, 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 listen, I've been real nice long enough. I want to. Why are you using other products when you know I tell you the truth? Why are you using other people's products when you know I ain't gonna lie? I ain't a liar, okay? I ain't a liar. I ain't trying to scam you out your money. I ain't trying to do anything. Use the products. I promise you they work, okay? I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. Ask anybody. If you use my products, comment below letting the guy, everybody know how you feel about the products below. If you need any sessions, guys, sessions are still available. No games. Get these sessions. Y'all see I'm getting snatched. Come on with me. Let me teach you how to live beyond herpes. How to live after herpes. To live life, y'all. I'm not showing y'all these vlogs for my health. I'm showing you to see my life on a day-to-day -day basis. Me talking about what's going on in my life so you should realize that your life ain't no different from mine. It's just my mindset is different from yours. Change your mindset and I can help you do that. So I love you guys. I'm available to you guys. Don't be scared to talk to me. Reach out to me. Message me make sure you go to my instagram um like my instagram also if you got a question you always dm me or go to my website www.stdlifecoach.com and go there i love you guys and see y'all later y'all know what bleep is on the way see ya